So welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, president of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to go over Beautybox Video 3 and how it works within Premiere Pro. Beautybox is an After Effects plugin, and of course, Premiere supports After Effects plugins. But there are some differences, so that's what we're going to go over. And uh, let's dive into it. So the first thing you want to do is go down to your effects panel and go to video effects. And we're going to go to our digital anarchy folder here where you can see beauty box and our other plugin flicker free. And we're going to drag beauty box onto our clip. Now, if you're using the demo or you haven't registered it, you're going to see a crosshatch watermark pattern on the video. If you have a serial number, what you want to do is click on the setup button over here and that will pop up a dialog box that will let you enter in your name and serial number and all that good stuff and get rid of that watermark. And the next thing you're going to want to do is come down to the bottom of the parameter list and click on analyze frame. And what this is going to do is allow Beautybox to run the face detection and other algorithms to figure out what the skin tones are. You can use the dark and light color, color chips to do that manually. But the way Beautybox is designed is you click on Analyze Frame, Beautybox does the analysis and figures it all out for you. And so that's what we're going to do. And you'll see that once I do that, these colors will change. So I'll click right now and we'll see the colors go ahead and change there. Since we do use face detection as one of the methods for figuring out what the skin tones are, it is helpful if your talent is facing the camera. It's not absolutely necessary, but it is helpful. And we can now take a look and see what our mask looks like by clicking on Show Mask. And you see it's done a really nice job of selecting the skin tones, it's created a pretty good mask here. You can see we do have a few gray areas on the face, on the chest, on our arm over here. And if I move around the rest of the video clip, you'll see that we have some other gray areas show up on our cheek. So it's created a very good mask. Uh, we can still improve it a little bit. And so I'm going to back up to a shot where we're looking at the side of our face. And you can see that we have some gray blotchiness on our neck and on the cheek and up on the forehead. And so the way to fix that is to go to our mode pop-up and select add color. Now this is one of the differences between Premiere and After Effects. In After Effects you can just go ahead and click on the comp window and it will add in the additional skin tones expand the skin tone range and get rid of these areas in the mask. But we can't do that in Premiere. So what we have is a thumbnail down here. And when we select the Add Color tool, we can click in this area and that will allow us to select the additional skin tones. So I'm going to click on our cheek. Now sometimes this doesn't quite work. Uh, what will happen is Premiere just doesn't bring up the eyedropper tool. And so usually what you just need to do is turn it to off, turn it back to add color, and now we have the eyedropper. And so we can go ahead and click on her cheek. And you can see that that's already improved the mask. Uh, we can also go ahead and do our little trick to get the eyedropper back and click on her neck and we'll see that improve. And lastly, what we want to do is get the area up on her forehead. And again, we'll grab Add Color. And you'll notice as we do this that the dark and light colors are automatically changing. And that basically just represents that you're expanding the skin tone range. And Beauty Box is adding those colors into the mask. So I'm going to click on her forehead. And you can see that that's improved the forehead a bit. And I've even added another click to take care of the area up here. And so that's going to give us a much better mask. And now we can move ahead in the timeline. And we can see that we actually have a much nicer mask than we had before. 
If you want to get this area that's on her arm, we can do that as well. Again, go back to our Add Color tool and just click on the arm there. And we can improve that. All right, so this all looks pretty good. And so now that we have our mask, we can go ahead and start figuring out what we want our look to, to be and how much smoothing we're going to add in. Now to do this, I'm going to go to the portion of the video where she's turned her head and I'm going to zoom in. Now if I turn view box off, you'll see that she's got a fair amount of skin damage on this side of her face, along with some blemishes up here. And I'm going to turn beauty box back on and we can see the difference. It's on, it's off, on. Beauty box has done a great job of minimizing this, the damage, really smoothing your skin out, but still keeping it looking realistic. We still have a lot of skin texture. You can still see some of the pores. The goal with beauty box is not to just completely sandblast her face or make her look utterly airbrushed. We're really trying to keep a realistic look, essentially just applying a layer of digital makeup. Just a layer of foundation, a little bit of makeup to kind of take the edge off of what 4K and HD are really giving us these days. Because you're seeing a lot of detail, and especially if it's a talking head, the higher resolution adds in a lot of detail that you really may not want. And that's certainly the case here, as you can see. Just a lot of detail, and with the box on, she still looks like herself, she still looks realistic, but it's just taking that edge off. And of course, we can fill around with the smoothing amount. Let's uh, expand this open a little bit. So the main controls for Beauty box are the smoothing amount and skin detail smoothing. The default settings are really set up for HD. Uh, you may need to drop it down just a little bit. In this case, let's set it to 20 and 30. And I'll make it a little bit less smooth. And we'll also increase the contrast enhance, which will enhance the contrast in some areas that might otherwise be losing it. That's always one of the dangers with doing this type of work is that in addition to smoothing out the skin, you also get rid of a lot of the contrast. And so with those adjustments, we can see what the before and after looks like. Less significant than what we had before, but depending on what look you want, Viewbox gives you a lot of flexibility. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase this a little bit more, get a little bit more smoothing in there, but still keeping that contrast enhanced high to, to make sure that we don't flatten out the image too much. And that's really the basics of Beauty Box. Those are the key things to know. There are some other things you can do. For example, if we turn our show mask on, one way to fill around with a mask is to adjust the hue, saturation, and value ranges. If you increase this range, it's going to start expanding the range of colors that Beauty Box considers for the mask, and we'll start actually softening the mask up. You'll start seeing more areas affected. Usually you want to have these set to pretty low values. If I set saturation down to say seven, you're going to see that it gets very strict about what colors it includes. And so this perhaps is maybe a little bit too low. So we'll put this back up to 15, but mostly you don't need to worry about changing these, but it is one way of being able to Further manipulate the mask. And we'll turn show mask off. The other important bits are the color correction. You can do some basic color correction on the image. Um, again, this is very basic. This is really not the place to be doing color correction. Uh, there are much better tools within Premiere to be doing color correction if you need to. But it can be useful in some cases because we do have the skin tone mask. So if you're just trying to make an adjustment to just the skin areas, you can turn on use mask and adjust, make adjustments that are only going to affect the skin areas. Very useful if you want to make aliens or avatars or what have you, or perhaps just slightly warm up or cool down the skin. But again, usually you're gonna to wanna to do your real color correction 
in a true color corrector. Uh, if you have issues with shine, we have the shine removal parameter. In this case, we really don't have much of an issue with it. But if you have bright lights or bright sunlight and the skin, you know, which can sometimes be oily, uh, creates hot spots, shine removal will go a long way to removing that in a lot of cases, or at least reducing it and making it less noticeable. And then lastly, we have the presets. So if you want different looks, if you want something beyond just the regular smoothing of skin, this will give you a whole bunch of different types of looks that you can apply to it. And if you have any problems with Beautybox, the first thing you want to do is turn off Use GPU. Most of the problems that come up with Beautybox, especially crashes, are in relation to the video card. And turning off Use GPU will tell Beautybox to not use the video card. This will slow down the plugin. Uh, usually you want to have this on. Uh, it should be much faster with it on, especially if you have a good graphics card. But if you do start experiencing problems, this is the first thing to try turning off. But of course, you can always contact us at sales at digitalanarchy.com. And if you need further assistance, please don't hesitate to uh, contact us. So that's pretty much all there is to Beauty Box. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully you found it informative. Obviously, you can find other tutorials and demo filters and all sorts of good stuff on digitalanarchy.com. So please go check it out. And uh, again, thanks for joining me.